Hey guys, Atticus James here with GuysOfGuns.com and today we are at it with an optic review. So today we are at it with the written or written 1 to 5 by 24 IR AR optic. And I have this mounted to my DPMS G2 rifle. And honestly, I've got to tell you that I really like this setup. Well, yes, I do want to be able to shoot this rifle out at longer distances, use it for more things. I tend to use this rifle more for hogs or for, you know, sitting out at the range where I'm only at about 100 to 200 yards. So I don't really need to have a huge scope mounted on this rifle. Now, with that being said, I do have some buyer's remorse. So this is, as I said, the 1 to 5 power. I would have rather have gone with the little bit higher, the 1 to 8 power on this scope instead of the 1 to 5, just because I always prefer to have more power. So if you're the type of person who likes to have more power, especially in an AR optic where you can do more things, I highly recommend going with the 8 power over the 5. You're going to be less disappointed because 5 power is only 5 power. So Make sure you really think about that when you're making your purchase and don't say, oh, well, I guess maybe I could just save a little money and go with the five power and it should be fine. Because that's what I did and I'm sitting here four months later going, uh, I would have liked that eight power. I think that would have been a little bit more what I want on my scope. But I'm not going to say that, that my stupid decision to order the wrong scope is any way a bad thing about the company or about the particular scope that I have on here. Honestly, the 5 power is probably enough. It probably works perfectly for the only applications that I'm using it for. But let's be honest, if you want something a little extra, you've got to pay a little extra. Like I said, I have this mounted to my DPMS G2 308 rifle. And I, I don't know. For me, I don't really need to have this huge scope. This one is just perfect for all of these applications of just sitting out of here at the range. I've spent so much time going with the bolt action and sitting there and trying to do long range precision that I think about that when I'm running this rifle, but then I go, you know, I don't have to manipulate a bolt. I can just take up, take my, my, my second shot immediately. This. This really is what I want. I'm not looking for something that is going to be, you know, bullet hole and bullet hole, even though this whole setup can do that. I more of just want this for planking or for, like I said, hogs. So this is what I need is an AR scope. I don't need that, you know, 50 with that massive bell where I'm going to have to do high rings and having to deal with this precision setup because that's not what my rifle is personally and I'm I, I know that this may be a little bit controversial controversial is that for me my semi autos I use them from you know zero to about 500 and 500 and beyond is going to be my bolt actions why yes you can use a semi auto in long range but honestly I want the barrel harmonics of a bolt action so if I'm going to be shooting past 500 meters or 500 yards, I want a better gun. And yes, semi-autos are great guns, but I want that bolt action. Call me crazy, call me old school, call me whatever you'd like. That's what I want. So, since I'm not really pushing out to 500 with this, eh, I think we're good. Why don't we go out to the range and shoot a little bit, shall we? Alright, so before the battery runs out, we're just going to go and fire off 10 rounds. I don't know. It's mounted to a gun. I just kind of want to shoot. So uh, I'll show the reticle here and then we'll get back to the table and I'll finish talking about specs and everything else. See you in a second. And we're out. I'll meet you guys back at the table. So first off, we do have a 30 millimeter tube. So I just have some medium rings that I got from Retin. 
you can go and buy their quick detach, you can go and find basically any 30 millimeter uh, mounts for the purpose that you want. So if you want to add a little flare to it and get some color and have something different, you can do that. You can change this up to really whatever it is that you want. I just went with the cheapest option just because honestly I'm not going to be pulling this off of my gun. I just need to mount it once and that's it. I'm not going to want to remove this multiple times. When I'm out hunting, when I've been out hunting, I've brushed up against trees and I've dropped the rifle. I've done a lot of stuff and this scope is shockproof and I've never had to re-zero this rifle. I am showing time and time again that this gun is zeroed. So, you know, honestly, I don't need to remove it and, and you know, baby it because, well, it takes care of itself. And since I don't really travel with this particular rifle, you know, it is what it is. Also, it's waterproof, and that's pretty nice. Let's face it, if you're out there and you're using this rifle and the rain starts pouring down on you just out of the blue, and it's happened quite a few times, you're gonna be protected because this thing is waterproof, it's ready to go. It does have a lifetime warranty on it, which is really nice. It means that, you know, if you have any issues with it, you can talk to the manufacturer, get it taken care of. And honestly, the guys over there are written or writing, uh, forgive me for saying the name, however I do, they're great. They take care of it. They're like, let's get it taken care of. Let's get it sent in or let's take care of it. They just want to make sure that your product that you have purchased is taken care of, that it can get back onto your rifle as fast as they can. Plain and simple, that's what a good lifetime warranty is all about. Now it is made in Japan, so some people might think, oh well you know I only really want to buy American brands and if you look at the cameras that I'm running right here, you know I've got a uh, Sony, I've got a Canon, you know, glass is not made in the U.S. I mean, you, your high quality optics for camera gear is out of Japan, it's out of the, the um, Asian countries, it's out of Germany. We in the United States don't make glass like they do. So, yes, manufactured in Japan, but it's still an American product. Why? Because, you know, it's for us, you know, we're the ones who use these brands so honestly you're not sitting here going oh, horrible quality it's just made in Japan now one of the features that I really love and I don't know that it's a feature I think it's more of just it is what it is I have always been a second focal plane lover. I, I prefer to have a second focal plane over first focal plane for the simple fact that with this particular scope I don't have to deal with adjustments and, and having it brought in and, and moving and you know having to see what all of these cross hatches are. Everything stays in one place. It's just the target that's zooming. So if you're unfamiliar with what first focal plane versus second focal plane is, First focal plane means that the crosshairs actually move forward and backwards, are printed onto the glass that moves in here. So as it gets closer, it gets closer to your face. As you zoom in, that, that crosshair is gonna get closer in. Second focal plane means that it stays in one spot, everything stays in one spot, all of your adjustments are right there, they never move. So as long as you know what your adjustments are, you don't have to worry about losing half of your adjustments. Now, I do want to talk about the turrets. I love these turrets. They're great. They feel good. They're easy to use. They are half MOA clicks, so they're not the quarter MOA that a lot of people are used to, so be aware of that when you're sitting there and you're talking to your buddy and, and he's going, yeah, and, and, and this weekend it was awesome and, and whatever and you're sitting there going uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah and you're just adjust, adjusting like you normally would with your quarter MOA you're going to go too far so be aware you have half MOA not quarter MOA uh, twists so make sure you, you remember that I do like these turrets like I said they've been you know designed really well the um, writing on them is very clear, very legible. When you come in here, you know exactly what click you're on. You can quickly go and adjust. You can see what you need, and that's great. 
All right, so my final thoughts on the written RT-S Mod 7 1 to 5 by 24 IR scope. I love it. Like I said in the beginning, I wish it was the 8 power, but a 5 power works great for the applications that I'm using. The scope is great, and I'd, I'd love to see more of their products. I'd love to go and have some of their bigger optics to go and really see, you know, are they a company that's out there that's making some really high quality optics that I didn't know about. This is the first review that I've done with them, so I'd like to get more under my belt and say, yeah, we've, we've done a whole bunch of them, and I can tell you all about their scopes. But right now I don't have that, so stay tuned for a later review of that. Honestly, putting it onto my 308, everything works well. The, it, since it's shockproof, it's awesome. It, it, don't worry about it being, you know, that 308 being way too powerful. I probably wouldn't put it onto an A10 Warthog and assume that, you know, while I'm sitting there going, Bruh, you know, it would work, but I don't have a Warthog right now, so. I do have Patreon, so go go check that out. Go go donate money so I can get a Warthog. I definitely need that. Link is in the description. <sighs> what more can I say? Oh, sc scope caps. Let's talk about this. So, my scope cap, they're cheap. It did break. I don't know how well you can see that. I don't know. I don't like it. I, uh, I will probably end up replacing these with something more of a cover but the illumination is great as long as you don't run your battery down battery dies fairly quickly within a couple of days of it leaving on there's no you know four hour off switch uh, internal off switch so if you leave it on for a couple of days it's going to die and you're going to go oh crap so be aware of that I forgot I didn't know I, I ran the battery out like that so I don't have an illuminated reticle anymore until I replace that battery. Guys, I'm Atticus James with GearsWithGuns.com. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope you guys will leave comments and likes and subscribe if you haven't already. We have social media where I do post all of our images. We got some cool mail call stuff that came in this week, so be sure to go and follow us on Twitter to see all of that. We're on uh, Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Pinterest, we're all over the place. Also, like I said on uh, Patreon, so if you guys want to support our channel so we can do more awesome reviews like this, please feel free to go down to the link in the description. I'm also working very, very hard to try and get up our Reddit, subreddit, so that way that you guys have a place to post and talk and, and share all of the cool stuff you guys are working on. I'm really working hard at trying to get all of that set up, so stay tuned for that hopefully in the very near future. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.